Hey guys, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make a fun Bitmoji scene that you can use in your Google Slides. So you can see I've got this background and I just changed the Bitmoji for a different look. And I also added my cat. That's my real life cat. And you can have all different scenes, backgrounds, fonts. It's a lot of fun to play with. So I'm going to add a new slide so we can get started. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the top left corner of my slide and just drag down those little crosshairs so both those boxes are highlighted and press delete so I have a nice blank canvas to work with. And now I'm gonna press background and choose image. So mine is already in Google image search. If yours isn't, then go ahead and select that and then type in a search term like wall floor, which is what I used or empty classroom or something like that. I'm gonna select this room. I like it but I don't particularly like that color. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and insert a shape. That wall is really just a rectangle. So if I insert a rectangle that covers that wall, then we can make the room whatever color that we want and brighten it up a little bit. Okay, so this uh, rectangle has a border, so I'm gonna select border color, transparent to get rid of that border, and then I'm gonna pick a fill color and this light blue looks nice. Yeah, that really brightens up the room. And then now I can see that it's not fully, fully covering everything. So I'm just gonna play around with it. These scenes are a lot of trial and error. So um, you just play around with it until it's exactly how you want it. Um, and you, so we're gonna get started. We're gonna make the picture. So um, I'm gonna press insert image, search the web, and we've got a, um, oops, let's try that again. Insert image, search the web, um, and then you have a web search that shows up right in slides. So the important thing here is you need to use the word transparent in all of your searches. Um, if you want a living room scene, transparent couch. You can see from my slides that I like this one. I like things to have kind of a cartoonish look. Uh, because my Bitmoji is cartoonish and it kind of keeps the theme. So, and then you just size it down. You, um, from any of the corners, you get the diagonal arrow and that maintains the width and height ratio. So you can do a couch. If you don't want that, I just hit the delete button. Then if you want more of a classroom scene, then let's add a whiteboard. Okay, so transparent whiteboard. Let's see, I use this one a lot, the silver one down here. But for this one, I'm going to use this whiteboard. I like this one a lot, but I don't want that palette that's on the side. So first, I'm going to size down the same way, just by um, dragging from the corner diagonally. So to maintain that ratio, bring it down till it's the size I want. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click and see how the border became gray. Now I can crop. So you want your cursor to turn into an arrow and that happens in the middle of any side where it's just an arrow. So I want it to do on this side so I can crop out that palette, drag it over, Oh, Command Z or Control Z, undoes the last thing you ever did. That's the, the best hotkeys ever. Okay, so now this has been cropped. So when I click outside of the box, the, that palette is gone. And now I can use this whiteboard. So um, you want to add a lot of details. So, you know, like bookshelves, lamps, art, whatever you like. Like I said, this is a picture of my cat. So let's add some details to our room. Let's add a window. Transparent window. And this one looks good. And again, we're going to need to size it down. Bring in the corners. And just kind of arrange it how I want. And now I need, now I've got a great window, but I need something to look out at. So let's see, um, transparent outdoor. You can pick one of these or transparent outdoor scene. Try different search terms, play around with it. I like this one. That'd be lovely to look out the window at. So I'm gonna drag that over. 
And then again, just drag down by the corners. And I'm going to close out my search because I want more space to work with. Drag down by the corners. And we can see that we're certainly going to need to change this shape a little bit. So now I'm going to go in from the side rather than the diagonal. I don't care anymore about maintaining the width and height because I can tell that I'm not going to be able to with this image. Okay. Okay, great. That looks like it fits really well, but the problem is it's covering my window. So I'm going to right click two fingers on the trackpad and select order and send backward because I want it back one layer. I want the outdoor scene drawn first and then the window drawn on top of it. So that looks a lot better. Okay. So you can do whatever you like. You can put in furniture, lamps, flower vases, books, clocks, posters, and you also need to add, you add your Bitmoji. So if you downloaded the Bitmoji app on your phone and you created your Bitmoji there, then when you come to the extension, your Bitmoji will already be here. So you can do whatever you like. If you want a standing Bitmoji, photo is always good or pose will get you the same ones. Um, if you want words on your Bitmoji, you can actually uh, type any words you want and they'll come up. So, um, hey guys, and then they'll auto generate some Bitmojis that say whatever words um, that you type in, which is cool. So um, this is a good one. I like the sitting on the chair reading one. So I'm going to snap her right here in the corner, um, reading by the window, and you can put in whatever you like. If you have an image like I have of my cat that you want to remove the background on, um, or if you like one of those Bitmojis, but it has words, so maybe you have um, this Bitmoji that you like, but um, it has words on it. You can easily get rid of that. You just have to save it. So what I would do is I would go to a, a new clean slide and cut this Bitmoji and paste it here. And then you can, um, let's see, we want to file download as PNG. Okay, so now that's downloaded on to my computer. So now I'm going to go to the best Bitmoji tool in the whole world, remove.bg. So anything that has a background on it, you can remove here. So I'm going to go to upload. And in my download section, it's right here at the top, the slide that I just made the PNG of. This is the original. And this is what it looks like. So it's still got the words. There's a couple different ways you could deal with that. You can crop it right in, um, right in slides, or you can go to edit, erase, change your brush, shot, brush size so it's bigger, and just erase those words, and then download your image. And now when I go back to my slides, I insert image and this one that says remove BG preview, that's the new one. And there she is without the words. So and you can size that box down. I would crop it. I'll make it easier to work with. Oh, command Z or control Z, your best friend. Then um, if you crop the window, it's easier because you don't need all that empty space. And now click outside of it. And now you can resize however you like, do whatever you want with it. Um, for me, that's also how I did the picture of my cat. I just went to remove.bg and pressed upload image and went to my photos where I had a lovely picture of my cat, which is not gonna show up now. Um, but actually I texted it to myself. So it was this picture 
Let's add it to the photos library. Up oh, there it is. It just took a few minutes to load. So um, I uploaded and there it is. Same picture. So you can download that. And you can see his because of the in the original picture, see how dark it is, just like his head. That's why it came out a little funky like that. But if you see how I used it before, I just put his head against the couch so you don't even notice it. Um, and now I'm going to insert my image. And it's in downloads. There we go. It's the one that says remove BG preview. So I know that's the right one. And there he is. So I can size that down and put them right there next to me. So his head is up against the chair. Um, and that's it, really. Uh, you can use whatever fonts you like. If you want to insert text, you insert a text box. You can either do it from the insert menu or right here, text box, and put a text box on the board. Um, so then you can write whatever you like. Welcome class. I miss you and play around with the fonts. So I particularly like this one. The, I like the handwriting ones and I have some in my, um, font list that are not standard. And the way that I get those is, um, in Google docs outside of slides, I'm just going to go to docs.new to start a new doc. Um, I have an add-on called Extensus Fonts, which is a great add-on. So once this loads, go to my add-ons. Just taking a second to load. Okay, there we go. So these are a couple of, of uh, tools that I really like. Um, extensus fonts is one of them. It's not available in slides. So what I do is I come here to docs, type what I want to type. While that's populating, I'll type my message. Welcome class. I miss you. And then, um, this list is still loading, but you can select different types of fonts. I like the handwriting ones. And we'll put it in this font. So I highlight the text and click on the font that I want and use your telescope. And now I can copy and paste this back into my slides. And the cool thing is, is that the next time I come to slides, this font will be in my font list. So you only have to uh, copy and paste it once and after that it automatically shows up in your font list. Another cool um, add-on is, well first of all let me just make this bigger so we can see it and then I'll show you another cool add-on. So I'm going to make this bigger and I'm going to bold it. So let's make it 30 and bold it so it really is emphasized. So here's another cool add-on, rainbow Magic Rainbow Unicorn Slides. So this will take a second to start up, but I've got the text highlighted, and then I'm just gonna click Start the Rainbow Magic, and it turns my font into a rainbow, which I really like. I think that's really a fun thing to add. Um, and another way that you could do the writing is do, I'm gonna close this out, um, is you go to Insert, word art. And then I'm going to say welcome class. And then if you if you hit enter, it ends, it, it takes you out of this box. You have to hit shift enter in order to get to the next line. I miss you. And then I can hit enter to get out of this box. And I get some word art that I can play around with. So I can change my text box size so it fits in the board and center it however I like. And also I can fill in the color. So um, if I want it to be orange, it can be orange. If I want to change the border color, I have it set on black, I'm gonna keep it on black. 
Um, if I want to change the border weight to be a thicker line, then you can do that as well. So you can play with it however you like. Um, and then that's basically it. I think the details are the most important things like clocks, bookshelves, bins for your class, uh, banners, lights, posters. The more detailed you make your room, the better it looks uh, without being cluttered, obviously. Oh, there's also rugs that you can add. So rugs are a little bit trickier. Um, so let's do a web search for a transparent rug. And the trick with rugs is you want to look for rugs that look like they're lying flat, right? So like this one is going to be difficult to maneuver. This one will be easier. So let's lay this rug down on the floor, size it down. I'm going to, again, close this out so my workspace is bigger. And I'm just going to keep dragging it over so I can see it and sizing it down. There we go. And maybe I might want to um, have it off the off the slide. And that's fine for me. I don't mind actually when it's off the slide, but if you want it to be just stay right on the slide, you can just crop it to the to the size of the slide. So then I would just crop it up to here to the edge of the slide and here so that then it looks like a picture of the slide. Um, so that's really it. Then you just go through and follow the same process for whatever you want to add to your class. So have fun making your Bitmoji scene.